Servant, attend me. Yes, Centurion. Nor this. Yes, in turn. He is risen. I see that you have revealed yourself to me, so I will reveal myself to you. I am a centurion, as my servant has stated. My duty, my pledge, is to Rome. Long live Rome and death to her enemies. At my command are a hundred men. At this very moment they surround this building, hence the title Centurion. None may pass through these walls except at the end of a spear. Servants. Those who would dare rise up against Rome will be crushed as wheat on a millstone. As you see, I am a true Roman in the service of her emperor. I serve it with my life, with my bonds, with my blood. Perhaps some of you are wondering how a Roman would know your special greeting. For some of you were cautious to respond. I am a centurion, as I stated, in the service of Rome. I have given my life from a young man till now. The Roman Empire is vast and touches from ocean to ocean and covers all the lands, lands in which some of you are part of. As my men guard these doors, they offer protection for you and for me. Some of you perhaps are wondering, how is it that a Roman would know where you meet? Or what would I know of your special time together? More than you may realize. For you see, when I was young, we were stationed in Capernaum. My father was a centurion. Rumor had spread that there was a Jewish rabbi, a teacher in the land, doing miraculous things. But this was nothing new or odd, since there were always Jewish teachers throughout the land, claiming to do miracles. But they were always exposed for the true frauds that they were. My father was a wise and practical man. He had a favorite saying, if it be true, believe it, even if all things are contrary to it. News had come that a Jew by the name of Jesus had entered the land, and a great number of people were going out to meet him. But my father would not go. He said, this is a Jewish matter. Besides, we are Romans. That night, Caius became ill. A doctor was called for him to examine him. The doctor had never seen anything like this before. Caius was lying paralyzed, crying out in feverish pain. The next day, there was no relief in this pain. As I mentioned, the doctor did not think that he was going to make it. And I, as a young man, had never seen anyone that I loved before die. My father bid me to accompany him. Which I thought, how can this be? Caius is our family servant, and my father wants me to leave with him 
when Caius is lying still, all alone, in pain. But I obeyed in shock. For I knew my father loved Caius. But why would he leave him in a moment like this? My father threw on his armor, and through the crowded streets he moved, pushing people aside until he came to his desired location. There sat a Jew on a crate, teaching a large crowd of people. When my father approached him, he spoke in a contrite manner. Lord, my servant is at home paralyzed, and he is dreadfully tormented. The Jew stood up from the crate and said, I will go with you and heal him. But my father held out his hands in protest. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. For I also am a man under authority and having soldiers under me. And I say to one, come, and he comes. Or I say to another, go, and he goes. And I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. This man turned back and began to teach to the crowd, of which I could not hear what he was saying. But when he turned to my father, he said to him, Go your way, and as you believe, let it be done to you. My father turned and left. And when we arrived at home, there was Caius standing in the doorway. There was great rejoicing that day. For we left him lying near death, and when we arrived, he was alive in perfect health. And my father's words rang true. If it be true, believe it, even if all things are contrary to it. A few months later, I followed in my father's footsteps, and I joined the army of Rome. The next six months I spend in training, as all soldiers do. And then the following twelve I spent in fighting Rome's enemies. It was after that that I received my very first station. It was in Jerusalem. Right after the Passover, during the week of feasts, I arrived in Jerusalem to my assignment at the cohort in the Praetorium the governor's household. I was surprised by what I saw when I arrived. It appeared that the soldiers' morale was deeply shaken. It was almost as if they could believe that something could overthrow the great power of Rome. And so I asked what had transpired. You see, I was not there to see these things for myself. So I will relay to you the things that I heard from many soldiers that took place during this event. It all started when a Jew proclaimed to be the king of Israel. Insurrection is not something to be taken lightly. He was arrested and brought before Pilate. And Pilate ordered him to be flogged. His orders were carried out. The soldiers took him and followed his order. Servant, perhaps you should hold this. The soldiers took him to flog him, but they decided perhaps they would have a little fun with him. They gathered him together and said, Ah, so, now we have another who claims to be the king of the Jews. But what is a king without a crown? They went off to the side and gathered some thorn brushes together, and they made a crown and they secured it to his head. But there was still something missing. How can you be king without a scepter? They grabbed a reed and placed the reed in his right hand and said, Now the king has his scepter. He has a crown. But as they looked at his clothing, they said, Ah, 
He has the clothing of a peasant, not a prince. They stripped him naked and covered him with a cloak of purple. Now he looked apart. But what king can boast about having a kingdom without, without people? He needed people to rule over so that they may pay him honor. Each of the soldiers started to take turns, bowing the knee in a mocking fashion. Hail, king of the Jews! Hail, king of the Jews! As they paraded around him. Their laughter soon turned to scorn. They began to spit in his face. They began to slap him with the open part of their palm. They took the reed out of his hand and began to whack him forward and backwards with it. The whole time mocking and laughing. It was not long before Pilate called for him to be returned to the judgment seat to face his sentence. It was there that he was sentenced to the skull to be crucified, or as the Jews call it, Golgotha. At Golgotha, it is hard to determine if my fellow soldiers can truly be believed by what everything that they said. For at noon, the skies became dark. This darkness covered the land. There was something not normal about this. The centurion gave the order for lights, torches to be lit so we could see. When I say we, my fellow soldiers, so they could see what was taking place. And at that time, the Jew cried out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? There was something supernatural about what was taking place. For he cried out again, and the ground began to shake, and rocks split in two. And the centurion said, Perhaps this is a righteous man. It is a Roman belief that nature will cry out at the slaying of innocent blood. But what if it's more than that? What if it's as one soldier said, Truly, this was the Son of God. I serve Pilate with distinction and honor before I was sent to my next station. There I was moved to Caesarea, a beautiful town. And it was there that I had the opportunity to stay in Israel. Israel is a unique place. It is a special land, even with her stiff-necked people. And it was there that I come to learn that their God is the one true God of the universe. Although I was still considered an outsider, I used every opportunity to help others and to worship the God of Abraham. It was during one of these times that I was praying and an angel stood before me. My heart gripped me, for I had never in my life felt so unworthy for there was no place for me to hide. Finally, I choked out the words, Lord, what is it? And the angel said, Your prayers and the gift for the needy have come up to the Lord God as a memorial. You are to send men to Joppa, and find one Simon, whose surname is Peter. He is living with the tanner by the sea. Send for him, and he will tell you all that you must do. The angel departed, and my courage returned. I sought out my most faithful soldier and sent him to Joppa immediately. Find this Peter. 
in Joppa. Four days later, I received news that Peter was found. I gathered my entire family together and those who believed as I did to meet this man of God. When Peter arrived, I bowed down in honor before him. But Peter lifted me up and he said, Arise and stand for we are just alike. I asked him if he'd be willing to come into my house. For I knew it'd be difficult for him to do so. And Peter said, you know how difficult it is for me being a Jew to go with one from another country. But God has showed me that I should call no man common or unclean. Therefore, I consented to come right away. I believe Peter was amazed at how many people had come, at how many people were gathered together to hear what he had to say. After all the pleasantries were done, Peter entered the, our home. And he asked, why have you called me here? I told him that four days earlier, an angel came and told me to seek you. For you had God's word concerning us. And so now we are all gathered together to hear what God will speak to us. Peter was amazed in truth. He began from the very beginning telling us about Jesus Christ's ministry throughout the land. How he healed the sick, caused the lame to walk again. Those who couldn't see they had sight. But he focused on this idea that he came to die for the sins of all. Not just the Jews, but also the Gentiles. And that he rose again on the third day. It is as the prophets gave witness. Anyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven. These are pearls memories entire life for my entire family had passed from death to life Peter recognized that we believed what he said because what Peter spoke was truth and we received it and they asked us do you want to be baptized of course we said yes who does not want to be identified with the risen Savior we asked Peter please stay with us a few days which he consented. What a thrill to daily hear about the Lord God. He changed lives. For my guilt and my sin were removed. As a soldier, there are many times the cry of havoc was called. The dogs of war were released. Entire cities, towns, and villages are put at the end of the sword. Many have died at the end of my sword. But all have chosen eternal separation by rejecting his revelation. It is said that there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understand. There are none that seek after him. It was long after my time in Caesarea that I was called back to Rome. Rome is a vast city. People from all over the empire and beyond come to Rome with their strange customs and their goods in hoping they might sell these goods or the lure of rumor. It was while I was preparing for my next tour that I heard about a Roman citizen who was arrested over a Jewish dispute. I thought to myself, how could this be? I wondered if this dispute had anything to do with Jesus Christ. You see, regardless of what the crime is for a Roman citizen, he has a right to appeal his 
problem to Caesar himself. And this individual had done just that. I came to his house. I really shouldn't say his house, for he was under house arrest, with one of the soldiers out front. As I entered in, I saw a short man joyously talking to a copyist, speaking as a father speaks to his children. A smile as big as the sky was on his face. And he said, as he was waving me in, children, be obedient to God. Be imitators of him. And he pointed to the copyist to take a break. And then he began to ask me some questions. He said, have you also come here to learn about Jesus Christ? I said to him, if you mean the Jesus who was crucified in Jerusalem, him I know, and I would suspect you know him also. The man began to laugh and to praise the Lord. He said, come in, come in. Make yourself at home. How can anyone be cheerful when they're under arrest? He began to ask me all sorts of questions. Who I was, where I was from, where I spent my childhood, why I was in Rome. But the question that I will never forget that he asked had to do with my armor. He wanted to know all about a soldier's armor, its purpose. So I told him, I said, we all carry a belt, and from our belt, pull everything up. We have a breastplate, which protects our internals. We also have a helmet to protect our heads. We carry a shield. The shield is to keep missiles on us. Our shoes are also designed for protection and traction. And we carry a sword. A sword that is designed for thrusting forward. We have no armor in our back. It is, for all practical purposes, open. For if you turn to run, you die. Humans do not run. Routinely move forward. After telling him about my armor, he abruptly excused me and said, Come back to me tomorrow. I have something I want to give to you. Before I knew it, I was out the door. I thought it odd that a prisoner have something to give to me. What can one who is captive give to one of my standing? But I came back next day, and the man was joyous as he had been before. Excited to see me. And he came to me, and he, he said he had just finished writing a letter to his friends, and had something special to give to me. I asked him, what does it wish to go? He said, there come time in life in which you're going to be urged. I have written for you in this scroll. Some of you read to encourage this. Never you feel discouraged. His tone changed, and he became furious. His eyes locked onto mine. And so this, that wherever you sent, it is not by you, but it is by the hand of God. As armor protects you, so you protect us. For the days are evil. He handed me a and then he desisted me. The four seasons. Go. I had my scroll, and I turned and left, and went immediately home. A lot of orders that were for me, head for Gaul, immediate. I just transpired since my time in Rome, but I wish to share with you what encouraged me in so many days of fighting, struggles of life. My brethren, Finally, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The armor of God, so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, and against powers, and against world forces of darkness, against spiritual forces of wickedness and Therefore, take up the full armor of God that you will be able to resist in the day, and having done everything, stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, 
and have shod your feet. Preparation of the gospel of peace. And in addition to all, pick up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. With this in view, be on alert with perseverance and petition for all the saints. So I do you, brethren, stand firm, whether you be put to the end of the sword. Stand firm if you lose all your earthly possessions. Stand firm if your neighbor speaks evil of you for following Christ. I say to you again, he is risen. I love Easter, and I love the message of the and of our Savior and the hope that we have in him. Um, I don't know all of you. I know some of you. Um, what I wanted to, at least uh, as he was dismissing, he asked if I'd come up and just share. And in make an invitation. I don't know if you know Jesus personally, um, but you can. And you can enjoy the eternal life that he has to offer through the redemption that is in him and the righteousness that he gives each all in his name. If that's something you'd like to discuss, uh, I'll be around, the pastor will be around, and you can uh, come up to talk to one of us, and we'd love to share with you. In the meantime, those who have that blessed us, let us go that this day has to offer. God, I thank you for today. I thank you for the celebration we have, that we can rejoice in the resurrection of our risen Savior. The life that he offers is, is sure. It is as sure as anything, but we thank you for it. I just pray that each of us would uh, go in grace and the knowledge of our Savior. You would cause your faith to shine on each one of us, and we would have ears to hear your gospel, eyes to see it, and believe it with an open heart. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.